Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the draft recap for the world's playing stage. Uh, this is day two. Um, as with yesterday, I want to go over best worst draft, uh, overall draft winners, overall draft losers, worst itemization, best itemization, and the general meta read at the tournament so far. Um, so, this I would consider the best draft. Now, it didn't go well in the game. I'm sure lots of you saw it. And I think it's something where people are going to see the zillion top and think that it's bad when they just played terribly. Honestly, this game they even made Hecarim look bad. I'll talk about why that was later. Um, but in the very next game, someone picked Hecarim and showed what you should actually do be doing with the champion, and it looked completely different. Uh, so, first off, why do I think this draft is good? Um, not only is Zillion Top something that I've said can be good for a while, um, they also flexed it, which is part of the reason that it's so good. They flexed it with uh, Hecarim, they also flexed it with Set. You actually don't know where those three picks are going until like the very end of the draft. Um, so I think the flexibility is really good. Uh, the Zillion free scales into a lot of melee matchups. I actually thought Aatrox might be a matchup where he would struggle, but honestly, in lane, it didn't look like it. Um, the lane phase was the least of the issues this game, actually. Um, but the Zillion with the Hecarim, uh, with the Callista, um, even with the LeBlanc. Uh, but yeah, just putting bombs on Hecarim and speeding him up is really insane. I think a Zillion here, you can just go Leandri instead of um, Everfrost and just you're putting the bombs on the Hecarim and you're speeding him into them and he's just killing them. And there's really not a lot of resistance that Saigon's comp can offer. Um, Poppy and Renata are great picks from them. Um, but I don't think it should be possible for them to have Renata. So let's talk about what I would improve for Isaris's draft. Um, instead of LeBlanc, I would just take Corky or Zerath. They have very little way of ever approaching Corky or Zerath in their comp, uh, and they can just poke them down for free before Hecarim goes in, and then Hecarim cleans up. I think that would be a perfect mid lane pick here. Uh, and then on R4, they should just be taking away the Renata. If you have Renata and Zillion with your Hecarim, how is anyone ever killing him? Or even on your Callista? Like, it, it's such a turbo pick for them, and I think they should have denied it from Saigon because it's a really good pick for Saigon as well. Um, but even so, it's really hard for Saigon to deal with Hecarim until they scale. I don't think they should be scaling. Um, so what actually went wrong in the game? Uh, Grell on Hecarim, I believe there was a, a one and a half to two minute window where he didn't kill a camp. He was just looking for ganks. He was playing Hecarim like it was Trundle. When you're playing Hecarim in the early to mid game, you want to be keeping your camps respawning. And then you can use your lane prior. You don't have to. And also he was always going for ganks. He was never going for invades. So there was a time where Trundle showed on bot side while his entire top side was up. And they dove his top lane and failed instead of just taking his entire top side onto Hecarim. Uh, so it's things like this. You need to play the economy game on Hecarim. You need to get your Hecarim ahead uh, and keep him ahead. And it's not difficult to do. It, it would have been very easy. Like, it's literally just kill your camps when they respawn instead of looking for cheese ganks. Uh, you're not playing Drundle, you're playing Hecarim. So yeah, uh, I really like this draft, all in all. Um, the LeBlanc's not bad, by the way. There's not a great deal in Saigon that can stop her from uh, poking. So she kind of functions as a poke champ. But what I want there is a poke champ, like a Corky or a Zerath. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I consider the best draft, uh, the flexibility, the creativity, and just ending up in what I would consider a hard winning position, really good from Isaris, despite them not having the player skill to match up to Saigon Buffalo. Um, the worst draft, again, happens to be against Fnatic, and it's kind of a similar thing. So last time we had the comp that couldn't interact with um, Victor, now we have the comp where they have nothing to stop LeBlanc. So if LeBlanc ever gets a lead in this game, uh, she's just going to pop forward and QRE combo and pop back out and there is no champion on DFM if you look that can actually stop her doing that Like not even like Alistair WQ can stop it. Uh, there's no way Kennen gets a stun fast enough. Victor cannot stun her uh, Trundle pillar doesn't stop her popping back. So she just W's in QRE's your t like she this game She was literally W'ing in QRE'ing the Trundle and popping out and doing like 70% of his health because there's just no one that can stop her doing that. I think she could even take first strike because she'd be farming so much gold doing that. Um, but anyway, the so not only do they not draft around the LeBlanc, which is shown really early, uh, they are one Trundle, which I think has been a terrible pick in this uh, world, and they are putting so much prior on it. So I, for one, really don't like that they're doing that. Um, 
they also self counterpick themselves on red lane uh, on red lane on red side they have three losing lanes on red side how does that happen bot lane's actually winning for quite a while they have misfortune into into uh, kaiser that's a winning matchup but then they pick alistair into maokai support now one of these champions does something in lane one of them doesn't which one do you think wins the lane yeah, Kaiser Maokai suddenly is winning the lane because Alistair brings literally nothing. They actually draft Trundle and Alistair, which I think have been the two individually worst picks at the tournament. They're just not performing in any game I see them in. Um, outside of that, they self-counter themselves with Kennen into Aatrox. I don't understand why people keep electing for this matchup. As soon as Aatrox has Merc Treads, Kennen no longer plays the game in that matchup. Like, it just becomes incredibly difficult to have a side lane, to lane. Just, it, it's awful. Uh, and then... Uh, Fnatic actually have some volatility to bring in with those three winning lanes. They have to lease in. I think there's definitely better jungle options for sure. I don't think it's the best draft from Fnatic overall, which is why I don't have this Fnatic draft as best draft, because it's for sure not. Uh, but this DFM draft is absolutely terrible. Like The, the fact that they self counter pick themselves in, in two of their lanes, uh, they blind Trundle. Like, they blind two of their matchups, the jungle and mid, and then they self counter pick the other two. So... Fnatic get good matchups across the board. It's really sad to see. Um, all right, in terms of who's winning drafts overall, um, obviously Fnatic were, I said, were winning drafts before, and here again, I think they've won another one. So Fnatic, I believe, are the only team to win every draft that they've played so far. Now, so that's three of them, three in a row. Uh, EG won a draft today. Um, or did they win two drafts? EG... No, I think they had a really even draft and they had one that they hard won. Um, and then uh, finally, you've got uh, Isaurus with the Zillion Top draft that I've just talked about. So they're now in the winner's club. Uh, in the loser's club, you have DFM, um, obviously this one. You have Saigon Buffalo, obviously the one with the Isaurus one. And then you have Loud, who I think are the people that lost draft really hard to uh, EG. So yeah, those are my teams in the overall draft losers section. Moving on to itemization. Worst itemization, again, I feel like every day there's going to be something that hurts my soul. Today it was Jojo's Akali. So here's Akali in this game. If you look at his items carefully, you will see that he has a Morello Nomicon. Third item. Why? Like, should we play Find the Healing? All right, there's a... Um, uh, uh, there's a there's a divine sunderer on Wukong. Maybe, maybe that heals like a couple of thousand over the course of the game. Maybe. Yeah. yeah um. Uh. No. This is like the worst Morello Nomicon pickup I have ever seen. Genuinely, I don't think I've ever seen someone buy it into less healing. There is legitimately no healing on uh, on the side of um, Loud. Crazy that he built Morello there. Anyway. Best itemization was uh, way on Graves. Now, I'm sure by now you all know that I'm a bit of a Graves enjoyer. This is a build that I think people have been missing out on. The uh, You start with the Umbral Glaive because of how oppressive it is early with the vision control, damage, haste, everything. Uh, how cheap it is, gold efficiency. Then you go Eclipse, and then from Eclipse, you pivot into Crit through Collector. So you go Eclipse, Collector, Lord Doms, and then if the game went longer, he would go for Infinity Edge. And we saw in this game just how much fucking damage this build does. It is insane, and I think more Graves players should be going for this build in games where they don't need to function as frontline. When they need to function as frontline, I think the Gordranker build is good, though. Like, I don't think it's bad, and I think it's good that Graves has those options. I just think that Wei elected for the correct build here, because he has a Galio, he has a Leone, he has a Jax. He doesn't need to be the frontline, so going for more damage here, definitely correct. Okay, into the meta read for uh, today. Um... Let's talk about what's been good. So Aatrox has looked really good. Now, Aatrox is looking a lot better than he is. Um, I mean, obviously the champion is good. He's a good top laner. Uh, the problem is he has two, in my opinion, two very defined counter picks that he really struggles against. One, obviously, is the Fiora. Um, we do see a lot of Fiora bans on blue side into B1 Aatrox. So a lot of teams are covering themselves with a ban. Um, but the thing that we've only seen once is the Irelia answer into the Aatrox. Now, the problem we have with this, and what worries me, is that the Irelia player who elected for the counter pick was so incapable of piloting that matchup, of piloting Irelia into that matchup, that they got shit on anyway by the Aatrox. Um, 
And what worries me is that people are going to see that and now think that Aurelia somehow doesn't counter Aatrox, which is absurd. Um, so I really hope we do see more Aurelia answers into Aatrox. Um, all right, on to other things that have been good. Uh, Renata. Uh, Renata finally came into the games. We've now seen some Renata after not seeing her for a while. Um, so I was really glad to see that. And uh, she looked really good in every game she was played in. Uh, of course, the champion is crazy, like I said uh, yesterday in the other video. So yeah, I was really surprised that she wasn't being picked. Um, but it's good to see that teams are now opting to pick her up when she's appropriate. Um, on to what's been bad. I mean, I've already talked about this. I think Trundle has been the worst performing jungle champion in the tournament. Uh, he's really underwhelming. He can't keep up with the clearing junglers like Graves and Hecarim. He just doesn't really bring a lot to the table anyway. Um, the only time he's ever really good is if tank junglers are really good so that he can steal their resistances. I guess sometimes he's picked into Maokai, but it's Maokai's not like Sejuani where she has the passive that he can steal the resistances off. So yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of the Trundle. And then the other one, of course, is Alistair. Every single time I've seen Alistair, it just gets shit on in lane and then does nothing. Um, it speaks for itself. Like, this champion can't play lane phases and... Outside of specific fringe cases, like when you're playing against Kennen, then Alistair can be really good because he can just always knock the Kennen away during his ult. Um, and then he can get out of the stun afterwards with his own ult. Um, yeah, I don't know. Alistair really looks terrible. Um, the last section of meta read is going to be what is missing still. Um, so still from last video, oops, I accidentally closed it. But uh, yeah, you saw very quickly Ash. Ash is still missing. We did see Gala actually hover it. And that's the first time we've been teased with Ash. And it was very good in the game that he hovered it. Uh, but he elected for Zaya, I think, instead, which was fine. Um, and then uh, Morgana still. Nobody's flexed Morgana yet, despite people actually picking up Vi that people are still playing Vi jungle. That's another champion that sucks and people are playing it. Please stop picking Vi. Uh, maybe Vi is the worst jungler. Like maybe Trundle is actually better than Vi. Uh, but yeah, Morgana, like lots of things, Morgana would just hard counter. And then actually uh, Corky. I want to say Corky is something that not enough teams are picking up. There's a lot of angles. I mean, I talked about one earlier in the uh, Isaris draft where Corky would be really insane. There's a lot of drafts where Corky would go unpunished in lane and would just scale into the monster that he is, and a lot of the time range is necessary in the current meta. So yeah, um, that's it for today, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.